This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global at the headquarters of uh, Mr. Frank Warren here. All right, Frank? I'm very good. How are you, young man? Yeah, all good, all good. Weekend off last weekend? No, I don't get weekends off, mate. I have to work. There's no boxing on. What are you doing on a Saturday or Sunday? Uh, well, I watch. Oh, I suffered badly. I watched Arsenal. Right. <laughs> really suffered. You know, it took me the rest of the afternoon to recover. Just about, yeah. I just had a nice quiet weekend, watched a bit of, watched a bit, bit of sport and that was it. Um, obviously, uh, you're showing Newcastle this week, uh, the much anticipated rematch between uh, the two Liams, Smith yeah. and um, Williams, and there was so much, or so many talking points from that first fight, you know. Uh, but they've both got a chance to kind of, for their own reasons, put the fight right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think they've, um, you know, uh, I listened to the... Uh, there was a transcript yesterday of um, the press conference and um, a few things were said which I thought were quite interesting. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that um, this time around, I'm sure Liam Smith's going to be on weight, which is the most important thing from his point of view. And, uh, and obviously Liam Williams uh, will, be, will be the same. Um, it's, it is an important fight for them. The winner of this will become the uh, mandatory challenger. I was hoping that Cotto would have had his fight before theirs and it got postponed because he was going to vacate and had that been the case this may have been but a vacant title but anyway the winner of this will fight uh, either Cotto or if Cotto's opponent beats him him, or the worst case um, for the vacant title so it's, it's, it's they've got everything to go for it's an important fight um, these two guys they're not it's not like an old guy fighting a young guy these are their, you know, their best maybe not quite their best, but they're two young, two young fighters, two uh, are the best in uh, in Europe, and maybe um, with the experience that they've they've had, and they'll hopefully continue to get. And who knows where they go from there? But they're very, very good quality fighters, and I think we're going to see. I think we're going to see pretty much of the same as last time because I, I don't think these. I don't think. I think the heart will rule the head. I don't mean they're being, you know, that they're they're not smart guys. They are, but I just think there's so much um, pride at stake with them. There's so much. Um, there was a bad taste before the last fight, and certainly after the fight. That I think they'll just be, they'll just be like, no, I'm the best guy. I'll stand with you and I'll trade with you. And I think that's what's going to happen. I mean, there was a point uh, I think before, obviously Liam Smith fought uh, Canelo, where. There was a considerable gap between the two, Frank, and Correct. it has closed. I mean, probably as a result of sort of maybe Liam losing that fight and Liam Williams sort of being on the rise more, I suppose. Well, I was quite yeah. surprised, you know. Well, first of all, you got to say the point, he didn't make the weight, and that didn't help. So that works in two ways. I think that works against Liam, Liam Smith, that he didn't make the weight, but it also worked against Liam Williams because, obviously... The weight disparity, disparity, and he gave weight away, and uh, so, you know, at, at the weigh-in, um, so that that there's that sort of you know, um, cloud over the fight, but you're right, they you know they the, the when you when the fight started, I thought I was I thought Liam Williams really started off well, uh, and you know it seemed it took um, Liam Smith a long time to get back you know to actually get into the fight and. Uh, and he was he was behind on points, but you know the round before and the round when it was stopped, I thought he was coming back into it. And you don't know well, though whether Liam Williams would have got a second win, because that happens with fights, doesn't it? You know you don't win every single round. You know in a competitive fight, then you lose a couple of rounds. But he got you know the cut. Um, I thought was uh, you know was very unfortunate, and it happened. But um, as a result of that. Liam Smith didn't become world champion. Had he made the weight, he would have done. And Liam Williams, I don't know. I mean, we know whether the fight should have been stopped or not. I'm not sure, but it was. And now, you know, they're back in there again. And uh, and, and I think it's going to be a very interesting fight. It's a very how, interesting fight. How ideal or not ideal is the fact that we have a, a Welshman and a Scouser fighting in Newcastle? Well, it's not ideal. You know, I don't mind putting fights on up in Newcastle. We've put some great shows and brought fighters in over the years up there. My, you know, the problem I had with the guys, we had to go to neutral territory. You know, 
the fight should have gone on really either in Liverpool or in Wales. That's where it should be. That's where the home is. That's where the, you know, where the where they're going to bring their punters out. That's where it should be. I mean, you know, it's not rocket science, but there we go. You know, we were looking at, you know, we were told that one of them didn't want to fight in Manchester. You know, so that that for me as a promoter is a bit of a, for want of a better word, a bastard. That's what it was. So in the end, we had to find a, a neutral territory, and that's what we've done. And we put uh, together, I think, a really good card up there. It's certainly a very competitive card. It's a great fight card up in uh, up there, involving some uh, some of their best young talent. Absolutely, um, Josh Lever uh, in action this week. You yeah. rate him quite highly, Frank, against uh, Glenn like Foot. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've, di I've liked him from from when I first seen him as an amateur in the ABAs. And he won it, and I and I thought he was the standout fighter. And I said to her, her a lot of the time, I said, "Listen, go and you know, set a meeting up with him. I want, you know, I really want to sign him." And, and that's what we did. And um, he's had a little bit of start and stop, but he's a he, he is a quality fighter. And uh, this for him is going to be quite a big test. You know, I think Josh has what he's had about what 12 fights or so now. Um, and the guy he's fighting has got you know quite quite a bit of experience, um, local passion. Local derby, you know, he's got all the all the ingredients there to be um, something a little bit special, and I hope it will be. But um, you know, I'm obviously, I'm in the Josh level corner, and that's the man I want to see come through. But it will be a good fight, and obviously, again, the people who will benefit will be the fans. Just going back to uh, the weekend's action, obviously, we saw a, a very destructive performance from Deontay Wilder against. Uh, yeah. Domain Stavern, I'm, I'm assuming you watched that, Frank. I did, yeah. All, all one round of it. Yeah, yeah. we'd well, done what we had to do, didn't he? When it last year, it's a bit sort of a slam and bam, bang, but you know, he's a puncher, you know, he's a puncher. As I've said, you know, he won the title when he beat Stavern, which was a tough fight at the time. I thought, it was, I thought he really boxed well in that fight, I thought he was, he was sensible. He got clips a couple of times with big shots, he took him, he showed he had a bit of a chin. But since that fight, He's looked very, very average to me. He's not, although he's not guys over, he's not, they've not been the most uh, scintillating performances. They've not been great fights, you know. You know, just I felt he'd gone backwards, but this one, you know, went out, put his foot on the gas, and destroyed the guy, and that was the end of it. The talk now is of uh, a potential fight next year between NC Joshua and Deontay Wilder, which is a fight that kind of makes sense with obviously three of the belts on the line. Um, who comes out on top for you in that, Frank? I don't know. I mean, you know, let, let's say they make it first. So, you know, I'm, I've got to be honest, I'm sick to death of keep talking about Anthony Joshua and what he's going to do, what he ain't going to do, whatever he's going to do, not going to affect my life. All I'm interested in is what we're doing. You know, at the moment, if Josh, all I know, if Wilder catches him on the chin, that's going to be interesting, and vice versa. Hmm. Um, Tyson Fury out in Monaco over yeah. the weekend. Um, Publicly coming out and saying, you know, he's seven stone to lose. Um, he's had seven stone to lose for a long time now, and but now he's got to start losing it. His hearing's in December, I understand, and uh, hopefully, you know, he'll get he come through and get his license. It will get cleared then, and he's got to go before the board to then answer some other questions. So hopefully, they'll reinstate his license. Hmm. But you see him in the mix for next year, Frank? Or? Oh, if he gets if he's licensed, of course he'll be in the mix. I mean, you know, he's white. He, he's the he's the and you know he's for me was the uh, undefeated uni unified champion. That's that's what he was. There's no doubt about that. He was the best one out there. Um, he gets back to, it, for my opinion, for what it's worth. If he gets back to being what he was, if he if we see the Tyson Fury that beat Chisora, and and then went on to beat uh, and do a, do a job on Chisora and do a job on um, Klitschko. He's head and shoulders, head and, head and shoulders above him, if he gets back to that level. Mm. Um, talking about Tesoro, we saw him, all oh, your phones are ringing at the minute. Um, talking to Tesoro, we saw him lose a European title fight over the weekend. Uh, was unusual. What did you make of it? Oh, it's just, you know. What normally happens in the big fights, doesn't it? It's, it's just history repeating itself. You know, I don't really care. I mean, what, you know, who cares? I mean, they, you know, it was wasn't the most again. It was the most dynamic of fights, was it? Who cares? I mean, I'm you know, I mean, they do well going. <laughs> what have been talking about Derek Chisora for? Or Nathan Gorman when he's fighting in Newcastle on Saturday in a good fight, two undefeated fights. You know, 
you've got today's news and you've got not yesterday's but yesterday's yesterday's news I'm on today's news but um, obviously Daniel Dubois out in action on your 9th of uh, December show against um, Dorian Dart so yeah. this is someone that you speak very very highly of Frank yeah I just think he's a you know I, look he's only had a was it five five pro fights but it's it's how people you, you know you look at a guy in the ring you see what he done albeit they've been very brief appearances because he's he's a big puncher but you you know he's just got that thing about him and you know we all hear all the different stories what he's done in sparring but when he's in the ring when it's the real deal what I like about him he's got great balance and he's got fantastic composure very you know just like it's just a day in the office for him he's got that there's no nerves about him nothing like that there's a few fighters over the years I've been involved with where you know everybody's different everybody's makeup is different you know you see guys in dressing rooms before fights you know you see some of them like they I, I, I remember Danny Williams in before some fights you think he would he wanted to go home in fact he did want to go home in one fight and had to be talked back into fighting and he went on to do some great great things at you know the level we fought at I've seen fighters be as cold as anything some having a you know having a sleep some really sort of their nerves are getting to them some just keep talking and talking they got to have people around them you know, it's just it's just how they are. I've seen. I remember Naz before a fight eating a sandwich. I've never seen anything like it in my life. He's coming into the press room. He was due to fight in an hour's time, and he took a handful of sandwiches and went off eating them. So they're all different. And what I like, what what with me, what strikes me with with um, uh, with Daniel is that he's, you know, he yeah, he has that air about him of that, you know, I'm here. I'm going to do it. I know what I've got to do, and he's just, you know, he, 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 you know, he's just got that special feeling about it. And uh, this thing's, this, uh, this question's got to be answered. You know, he's not being, no one in the ring's actually caught him with a good shot yet. Who knows what he's going to be like over 12 rounds? We're never going to tell. So he actually, if he ever gets in that position, and I'm sure he will do, like all fighters do. You know, all big punchers, it happens with them eventually. But we're trying to get him experience. He's he's working hard. He he wants to be in the ring all the time. He wants to fight. And as I say, for me, he, I just feel that he's a, he's something very very special. I think he's you know when I look, I'm not just as a heavyweight. When I look at a lot of fighters that I've been involved with over the years, and you sort of pick up on it, you think, oh, he look, he looks a bit, you know, he he looks something else. And he's one of those guys to me. And I'm not a bad judge. Overall, I mean, I made a couple of mistakes over the years with people I thought would do it, but I mean, this this kid, I think, is, I think he's the goods. I know it's very early on for him. He's only had five fights, but yeah. you expect within sort of a couple of years that he kind of would have caught up with that kind of the top of scene. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, we expect him to fight for British European titles next year. Absolutely, mm. you know, why not? Um, and you know. The way he, the, you know, the maturity he's got for such a young man, how mature he is, and, and remember, he's, you know, I say he's, you know, he's mature and he's outlook in the way he is, but he's still not as a man yet. He's only, only just turned twenty, just finished being a teenager. He hasn't got his man strap yet. You imagine him in a couple of years' time. I mean, he's going to be awesome. So, looking at all that and thinking of how that's going to develop, I think he will be up there with them. You know, I, I think you know, by this time next year, he's going to be. Well in that mix, well in there, he'll be talked about as when is he going to be fighting one of these guys if they're still around. Mm. Just sticking with the heavyweight mix, Frank, we saw Luis Ortiz being given a, a year ban uh, yeah. recently. Um, yeah, what do you think of that, Frank? I mean, well, look, if you cheat, that's it. End of story. You've been caught cheating, at cheating, taking drugs, then you're out. It's as simple as that. And he's been found guilty, and that's it. He has the right to appeal. If he's going to appeal, he will or he won't. He's, but he's given a sentence, so he knows that he can't he can't go and earn any money, earn any money in boxing for a year. That's his. That's what he's being. That's his. Um, that's his penalty. That's what. That's the price he's had to pay for cheating. What annoys me about Tyson Fury is two years on. And even if he has been cheating, even if he has, and that's we will. See if that's the case. I don't, I don't, from what I understand, that's not the case. He would have 
been back in the ring. If they're giving him a year, if they gave Lewis Park, uh, what's his name? Uh, Lewis Ortiz. No, Ortiz and Parker. Oh, yeah. Banned him. What did he do about six to nine months? If they've had bans for cheating and they're back in, so how long would he get? He, you know, he would be a, a year. And I'm not saying that's right, because at the end of the day, if you are cheating, if you are taking this stuff, you know, what should be the ban? How do you deter people from cheating? Do you say it's a year's ban? Do you say it's a two-year ban? Do you say you're banned for four years, five years? Do you take into consideration what their age is, who's training them, who's getting them to do these things? You know, if it's a young man who does know anything, if it's an older guy, you know, listen, you should know better. But at the end of the day, we don't want the cheating. And it's got to stop. And a message has got to be put out there. But if you are if you are charged, then as a matter of urgency, you should your case should be heard. Now, all tears, what was he? It was it um, six, seven weeks ago they found that he'd been cheating. Just uh, yeah, bef yeah, about that. Well, really Maybe is. less. Yeah. Well, whatever, month, yeah. six weeks. But he'd been up and done. And all I keep bleating on about Tyson is it's two years. Hmm. Were well, you referring to Shannon Briggs before? Shannon Briggs as well. Well, yeah. it's Parker. You've had Parker. You've had Shannon Briggs, and you've got Ortiz. I'm sorry, not Parker. I keep saying Parker. Yes. Lucas. Lucas, Lucas Brown. Brown. Lucas sorry, Brown. Apologies, Parker. So. I do, do apologise. Lucas Brown. I yeah. did it right. It's old ages. <laughs> but the point I'm making, you understand yeah. where I'm coming from. They've all been done, boom, and that's it. Should they? But you know, it's, you've got to look at it, look at what it is. You're cheating. Ban them. If they're found guilty, you're banned. That's it. What should the ban be? How are you going to deter? How are you going to stop this in the sport? You've got to look at the bans what you're giving out. If you do, if you do test positive, get it heard straight away. Get the case heard. We don't want it dragging on. It's not fair. It can't be right. It sends a bad message out all around. And by the time you get to two years later, you've got people like me saying, how on earth can UCAD allow this to happen? Are they going to try and prove a point when it comes to the case? We told you so. I think everything is flawed about this now. I think because I don't see how they can judge it fairly because they're going to have to prove that they were right, if you know what I mean. They're going to have to say, you know, we, 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 we allowed this to go on for two years. Whoever caused it to be postponed, whether it's them or whatever, they've allowed it. So now I don't think you've got a level playing field for that hearing. I think that's totally, I think it's a complete mess. And, the only, and at the end of the day, it's up to the administrators of the sport to ensure that doesn't happen. But I don't see where that, I don't see how in any shape or form that anyone comes out of this, well, you know, fighter's career has been stopped. If he hasn't, if, think about this, if he hasn't, if he's found to be not guilty, not guilty of PEDs, what he's been, what he's been called for, if he's found guilty, not guilty for that, he have been out of the ring for two years, what's he going to do about that? I know I'd be doing, I'd be wanting to sue him. So do they want to be sued? So how are they going to protect their backsides now? That's the mess of it all. Whereas it had been dealt with like that, as it should have been dealt with, you take all that, all, all, all that away. You, take, you, you give clarity to the situation and, and takes away the confusion. And, and do you know what? It's one of them stories again. Only happens in boxing, because it wouldn't happen in any other sport. Football wouldn't stand for it. Cricket wouldn't stand for it. Tennis wouldn't stand for it. No other sport would stand for it. Just our sport stands for that. You, or allows it to happen. You're right in what you're saying. There's no, there's not going to be anything that Tyson Fury is going to get back his last two years of his boxing career no. in his life. He's had a two-year ban. Hmm. Without being found guilty. Well, yeah, but if yeah. he's found guilty, yeah. he's done two years. Well, he probably had done a year because they're giving everyone else a year's ban. He's done two years. Whatever way, you know, if you say, right, that's what you're giving, at, that's what you give Ortiz, that's what you give um, Brown, that's what you give um, the other one we just mentioned, Shannon met, Briggs. You, but you've done two years. Doesn't make sense. Um, Billy Joe Saunders, obviously out yeah. uh, in Canada on the 16th uh, against David Lemieux, which is a, a great fight for Billy Joe. Um, and a, a tough, a, fight. tough fight, yeah. Yeah, very tough fight. Um, there's a method behind, well, I can't say it's madness, but a method behind him fighting that. Then we agreed the terms with Golden Boy to put the fight out and. Uh, in Canada, and that was really because um, HBO are involved, and it's going out prime time on HBO. So Bill will get a good slot; they'll be able to see him in action. You remember he's going to be on the undercard of the uh, 
uh, one of the Canelo fights where mm. he'd have had that slot and, we, and he, you know, for various reasons he didn't, the fight didn't happen but he'd get a great opportunity to go out there and show what he's about um, at the moment I feel that mentally he's on a roll physically on a, he's on a roll you know he, he got a lot, a lot of cobwebs out of his system in the last fight he's bedded down with his new trainer um, Dominic Ingle he sounds a different guy when you talk to him about boxing. You know, he's got a hunger for it, and this is going to be. And he's going to have to have a hunger for it because this guy's a tough guy. But Bill is a good, good boxer. He's got a good boxing brain. He's got a very good chin, and he's got and he's got a good he's got a good engine in him. You know, he, he, when when he's when he's bang on it, he is. He's got a great work rate, and that's going to be the key to this fight. And I think that. Um, and he can, you know, when he, when he and he has pulled big punches out of bags when he's needed to be, and it seems all the fights where he's gone into as an underdog, he's won all of them. He's not for me. He's not an underdog in this fight. He's in the other guy's backyard, but I make him favourite. But he's, but he rises to the challenge, and that's what good fighters do. So, hopefully, he comes for it, and uh, and then it sets up a really good year for him next year. Obviously, the talk is of the rematch between Canelo and Golovkin, talking yeah. about possibly that being in in May next year. Well, it will be if it's you know yeah, I can't see him doing the fight, but whenever you know that that's that will happen that fight. But are you still confident? I mean, let's see, touch with Billy Joe when it comes through. Uh, well, who are they going to fight? Yeah, you know they're going to you know what they're going to do, and you know Bill's relevant. It's not like he's you know he's, he's got a title. He's got you know he's got one of the most prestigious titles there. He, he owns it, and at the moment, and if he he retains his title in Canada, he's not going to sit around and wait till next September. By the way, he'll have fights in between. He is a relevant um, fighter as far as we're concerned. Do we have any news on Terry Flanagan? We know he's obviously moving Terry's up. Terry's gone up. Yeah. We're in negotiations at the moment with, um, with I'm talking about Dino Duva from Rock Nation, and we're just trying to sort out. They want to fight in the States. We want to fight here. And we're working on it. But, you know, Terry, it's a great opportunity to become a two-time world champion. This is with uh, Hooker? With Hooker, yeah. Maurice Hooker. Okay. Maurice. Maurice. <laughs> um... So, just yeah, run through your shows between now and obviously the end of the year. Um, Newcastle we, this week, Belfast next week. Well, we got we got uh, on Monday we've got our our uh, Nordoff Robin show at um, the Hilton in Park Lane, which is more or less sold out. We've got um, Steve and Daniel against Lloyd Elliott. Uh, they're fighting for the um, vacant WBO European title fight. That's on there. That's stopping. That's a couple of couple of good youngsters on the undercard. Belfast, which I'm really looking forward to, and uh, that's going really well. Um, I think I think we're more or less sold out there, if, if not sold out. What a great show! It's a fantastic show, and I'm looking forward to working with Carl Frampton. <coughs> you know, it's uh, it's quite exciting that he's in, you know, that, that we're uh, promoting him. From my point of view, I'm very excited about that. So he's got a decent fight on uh, for his first fight with us. Um, he's got a new trainer. Um, and Jamie Moore, so hopefully he's a bit like Bill did, bed down and get into the workings of uh, Dominic Ingle. He'll do the same thing and feel more comfortable with, with him. And I think it'll be a good combination. Uh, get that fight out of the way, and then next year he comes through that. We'll be looking to do some big things with him. You know, um, we've done a, a deal with Lee Selby, um, and uh, I'm hoping that it'll be in the mix next year with him. and. Uh, Lee Selby's got a fight, as you know, Josh Warrington, and that's going to happen next year. It's mandatory defence for a Lee's title. Uh, and then Carl, so we've got, we've got a great situation building there next year for some real seriously good domestic fights involving world-class fighters. So that's that kicks off the Belfast show. We've got um, a great fight there, you know, with uh, Ger Gerwin Anna Kalajas, is that how you pronounce it? Kalajas? That'll do, Frank. Yeah, it's Filipino. Not the he's a good pronounce. fighter, listen, he's no slouch. He's yeah, a good absolutely. fighter. And Jamie Conlon's in there with him in his hometown. You know, Jamie, I mean, he, he couldn't be in a bad fight if he tried. I mean, he's always exciting, he always gives, a, gives his all and 100%, and he's certainly going to pull it all out for this opportunity, see, to try and win the world title in front of his fans in uh, Belfast. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. And, that he does it, you know. It's it's not an easy job, but he, he's not going to be. You know, he can be for want of trying, that's for sure. And then obviously we're taking our man over there, Saloni Tetti, and he's fighting Siborizo um, Garcia, 
and uh, sorry, Gonya, get it right, Severino Gonya. Uh, he's defending his title in uh, Ryan Burnett's backyard. So we're over there. Ryan, as I keep on saying, he says he wants to. Um, Ryan wants to unify the titles. Well, one of one of those belts is there. Old comes through. We ain't got to go far. We can sign it the same night. We're there to do business, and that'd be a great fight for Belfast. Great fight for the fans, and a proper unification fight. It'd be three belts underlined. Three belts. That's yeah. what it's all about, and that's what they do. And then we got you know a good undercard on there. Putty Barnes is on there. You know, well, I've got who well, I think's. Uh, uh, tremendous prospect, so I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a good night. So after Belfast, then we've got um, what we've got happening after Belfast. We've got uh, another dinner show. We do two sick charity shows every year. We're doing the Deborah Show. We've got Lerone, Lerone Richards against Onda Erzgol for the uh, again for a vacant WBO European uh, title for the uh, super middleweight, and we've got Sonny Edwards in with Ross Murray for another WBO. Euro title, so that's a nice little card for the charity, and hopefully the charity, both Nordorf and um, Deborah, will make a lot of money for their very worthy causes because they're, they're fantastic charities. And then December the ninth, Copper Box, um, James DeGale. Looking forward to that. James, you know, to be back working with him. Um, it was quite, I quite enjoyed seeing him and at the press conference. It was, uh, you know, it was like old times. So. He's uh, he's done well for himself, travelling, all over the all over the place, all over the North America. So he's back now in his hometown. So it's gonna be a good home in coming from him, for him. And Lee Selby, as I mentioned earlier, he's on the same car. And then we have got Anthony Yard. Uh, he's fighting Nicola Sedja Locker for his uh, Intercontinental title. And then we've got uh, Daniel Dubois again fighting, as we mentioned earlier, against. Um, uh, Dariak Darsh, is that Dorian name? Darsh. Dorian Darsh. Dorian. Dorian. Darsh. I like I like your name better. What one? Do you like your name better? Yeah. Names? They, should, they should come with me and I'll change their names. I just call, call Dor- them all Fred Smith. Yeah, absolutely. Be easy when I can remember all that. Yeah. The good thing about it is when you've got a lot of fighters called Liam, that's hard work for me. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a good show. So it's a cracking show. We've got some great youngsters on there, you know, some all our young, all our young kids on there, and I'm really looking forward to getting them out there and seeing them in action. And you're still looking to go the week after as well, Frank? We're, dis- we're going to discuss that later today, yeah. because I've been travelling, I've just got back. So we're going to look at that today and see if we're going to do a show in Brentwood. But that's so quite, you know, quite, busy, uh, quite a busy six weeks. Um, and as I say, we've got, you know, we've got some some good fighters out there and, uh, and I think we're hopefully getting ourselves into a good position where 2018 we can hit the, floor, hit the ground running sort of February onwards with um, with some seriously good fights for the fans. Frank, just going back to uh, James DeGale, obviously there's a lot of talk at that press conference over there about this tournament that's going on at the moment, uh, but a fight that fans have wanted to see it for a long time was between De Gaulle and Eubank. Yeah. Um, but is that a possibility that could be revisited depending on Do Eubank's you know situation? In Don't the... even mention that name. I don't know why you keep telling me. I mean, look, for me, it's... I... That, that was the Billy Joe story. That's over. We're asking you but about it. But he does it with everybody. I mean, you know, go, go, you're going to have a conversation <laughs> with Golovkin about it. I mean, it's the same old thing. Look, he's in his competition. Let's, let's, that doesn't end till May, does it? No. So, you know, I'm sure James wants to be out before May next year he, he aims to be busy and, uh, and we're looking to build up you know we've got a couple of big venues booked for the summer we're looking to do some seriously big shows in the summer with some of our guys so um, hopefully James will be part of that and uh, and you know and, uh, delivering the fights that he, he craves and he wants and we haven't got no problem making fights we never try not to make fights we try to make fights so we can rule out anything to do with the uh, Well, I just say rule out. I mean, Eubanks in this tournament, isn't it? Yeah. And that's what it's meant at. for some point next year, whether it was a... Look, these fights should mentioned. happen. Why, if they don't happen, they happen for a reason. They happen, you know... I mean, fights years ago I wanted to see was Chris Eubanks fighting Michael Nunn. And fighters like that, they never happen. and happen for a reason. Mm. Well, because Mick, Michael Nunn didn't want them. Okay. Um... Have you got anything else you'd like to add? Or? No, I think it's all been pretty good. Anything you can think of? Oh, I don't know. 
You want to just get anything, anything off your, your chest? I've got nothing on my chest, mate. I'm, it's the first time a week since I got rid of this cold. Yeah? yeah no, all, all good, mate. Yeah, we're all, I think, um, you yeah, know, just quite excited about the way things are going. I'm really, as I say, looking forward to getting ourselves into shape for next year. Mm. What can you, uh, not promise, but what can you? What can the fans well, look for for, look for, for BT I mean, and Box Nation know, next year? Well, we, we talked about the um, uh, the three feather weights, haven't we? We talked about them, which is a, a really, um, I think, a, 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 an exceptional opportunity to make some good fights there with those guys. Um, Bill comes through. Bill's going to be involved in a couple of, hopefully, a couple of big fights, and we'll be working hard on that. The winner of Liam Smith and Liam Williams fighting for the world title. Terry Flanagan. You know, if we do something with Tyson, he's him coming back. If we do something, and besides all the youngsters that we've been working very hard on, because that, that's really where we, where our heads have been, like with Anthony Yard, with um, Daniel, with Josh Leverett, and all these other young fighters. You know, Zelford Barrett, Liam Woodstock. There's a there's a whole list of these these youngsters and uh, and I'm looking forward to next year them they them coming through to get to the stage where they're just on the cusp of fighting for world titles, and just getting there or thereabouts, and so it's a, it, it's going to be a, a very busy ne busy time next year and uh, for us as I say we're going to have some really exciting fights and plen promoting plenty of shows. That's the business you're in, after all. That's the business I've always been in, mate. That's the business I've been in. The Frank you, Warren before business. Before you were born. Yeah, the Frank Warren business. The old Frank Warren business. Yeah. And the new Frank Warren business, yeah. Yeah, we're working hard. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we just want, we, you know, we, I'm infused about it. I'm, you know, we've got a great team here. You know, you know all the guys, there's some, a lot of experience here. A lot of, you know, a lot of young, young guys involved now, and they're all, they're all, very enthusiastic, and that's where we're at. We, you know, and obviously, we want to keep moving with Box Nation, keep building, building with them as we've been doing. Um, you know, six years on, it's been a hard slog, but it's been worth it. It's been worthwhile, and we've delivered to the fans over the years. And that's where we're at. Well, long may it continue then. Fingers crossed. All right, Frank. Thank you very much thank for talking you, to uh, Eiffel to TV, and uh, we'll catch up in Newcastle this week. Yep, and we might be going to see Arsenal and Spurs, won't we? Mm. Uh, watch that on telly. I looked at the flights, it's not it's possible. It's not, I know, I it's looked not. at it before you, don't worry about that. <laughs> it's not possible, it's no, going to have to be the TV. No. Right. Mind you, then again, maybe we don't want to be there. Yeah, maybe there's a reason for that, yeah, absolutely. All right, Frank, we'll catch up with you this week. Lovely, thanks, thanks.